Anti-Afro Spengalis, yes, I'm going to give you some information about crime victim rights. It's very important that I make sure everybody is aware of this information and recognize you absolutely do have rights. And yes, I am going to infuse this information into this sector because there's some very disturbing elements and some very disturbing comments that have been passed my way and I received some clips of some things that were being said and basically people being made to feel as if they have to make a choice between their personal rights and allegiances and to me that is extremely vile and it's extremely dangerous to even imply people have to make a choice between safety and allegiances in the end, it's all about personal choice. So I'm gonna get into that, but before I do that, I wanna give some reminders about the channel. This channel is not a debate channel about whether or not Umar Johnson is a fraud. This channel has already determined that to be fact. Number two, there are people whose names are banned on this channel. Therefore, their names are not to be written in any comment. There are a few exceptions that I have used in recent videos. If you see that occurring, by all means, you're free to follow my lead. If you do not see me writing someone's name in a video or in the title, please refrain from using banned individuals' names. Now, if you are unaware of that, I'm not gonna hold it against you, but the people who have and we all should know who they are engaged in the behaviors that we know to be criminal and abusive their names are not mentioned on this channel i also don't get myself wrapped up in these abusive frenzies so if you see them don't expect me to jump in if there's something that needs to be addressed like a threat i'll address it otherwise someone else's frenzy is their frenzy. I don't internalize it, I don't adopt it, I don't own it, it is theirs. We have work to do on this channel. If you want information, you want to learn something, you want to get the 411, you can continue coming back, you will get it. Okay, so now let's get on with the content. I wanna clarify what I said at the beginning. Remember, this is an adult sector, so I'm assuming it's safe. When a person, doesn't matter where you are, for any reason is feeling unsafe and somebody invokes any sort of shame, any sort of comment that makes it seem in any way that notifying the authorities is something that shouldn't be done, that person doesn't give a damn about you. Now, let me make this clear. What you do for yourself and your family, your friends, your loved ones is one thing. That is not something that somebody else can impose upon you. Now, what someone else decides what they want to do for their family, their friends, their loved ones, people they care about, that's something that they can say for themselves. It's absolutely outrageous that somebody can say, over here, we don't call the police. What? A person can say that for themselves, but can they say that for everybody? So that means we're in a group and somebody comes in and threatens somebody. Nobody can make a statement that applies to everybody there that the person or people threatened don't have a right to obtain their crime victim rights for protection. People, are you serious? So now people are being asked or being told, 
although off of YouTube, outside of platforms, we all have families. We all have properties. We all have responsibilities that you are to leave wherever you are on the internet, wherever you are, and leave yourself out in the open for God knows what. Because you know what, people? Whether you want to accept it or not, there are people in the sector who are extremely unstable. Fear is not the determining factor. You don't need to be fearful of someone to recognize they're unstable and you need to take precautions to protect yourself. That does not mean that you are weak. That does not mean that you are less of a person. That means that you are sensible. This pandemic has driven a lot of people online. People who were in other sectors, and we know this, have been driven out of those sectors because of those behaviors were discovered and they were driven from there. So now they come to other sectors. And then you see these same behaviors repeating themselves. So for anybody to tell anyone, you don't have a right to protect yourself, think twice about how much that person cares about you. In the end, it's everyone's individual responsibility to decide what he or she is gonna do for themselves. But for someone to say to you, or to anybody, this is a condition of you participating where in my channel or on my, you know, whatever group that you're in, in my Facebook, in my Twitter group or whatever, you have a decision to make. That's entirely up to you. But I want to make sure that people are aware. If you are ever threatened, it doesn't matter where you are. If you are ever a victim of a crime, if anyone ever threatens you and you make a police report. Now here's the key. If you make a police report and you obtain an actual police report number, if you don't get it right then and there, call the police department and you can file for victim witness assistance. Now let me explain what victim witness assistance is. I had a conversation with someone a couple of days ago. This person had no idea this was accessible to this person. No idea. That to me is really, really shocking. And this person has police report numbers. So this person has already been linked to their victim witness assistance program. This is what happens if you have called the police. And in general, if you've made that report, within the last year. Now, if this person made the report longer than a year ago, this person would qualify still for victim witness because the person insisted the police didn't give the person the information. The person should have received this information when the person made the report. So what happens is there are victim advocates who sit down with you. They have the police report. They can get all that information. Excuse me, back up. They have the police report number. The victim is not the one that's supposed to be tracking down everything. So with the police report number, the victim advocate can get into the system and find out where the incident is in the process. Then from that point, the victim advocate is able to access the police reports and obtains releases to get medical records. Then all of that information is uploaded or any other information needed to file the claim and get the claim approved. At that time, the victim is able to find out just what benefits the victim is eligible for which can include therapy services, psychiatric care, and that is going to be available to the victim and the family. Reimbursement for property loss, dental bills, medical bills, any type of services that the victim would be eligible for. And it can include relocation fees. It just depends on the type of claim. 
Now, it's important to realize and recognize that eligibility does depend on the victim cooperating with the process, which makes sense. So if you are a victim of a crime and you make the report, but when they come to talk to you, you say, I don't want to, I have nothing to say to you. Well, part of the process of being eligible is that you seek justice. It doesn't mean that it will happen. It doesn't mean that they will find the person because it will cover all types of crimes. It doesn't mean that a prosecution will even take place because it's not required that a prosecution occur. It just requires that you make the report and it is a substantiated claim. And it doesn't have to mean the prosecution is successful or even that somebody was located that committed the crime. But you have to cooperate with the process. Let me give you an example. There are situations where there is gang violence and unfortunately someone is killed and the family can't afford the funeral. And it's sad because there's a dilemma. People may not want to cooperate with the investigation. They need money for the funeral. And unfortunately, it might come down to not getting the expenses paid. It can come down to that, which is really sad, but that can happen. So if somebody is reporting a crime and they are serious about justice and they absolutely reject the fact that someone has, sub, you know, subjected them to a criminal act, they want compensation. Yes, you make that reasonable effort to cooperate with justice being served. It's part of that Umar Johnson syndrome. It simply isn't possible to expect other people to treat you like royalty when you have such low expectations for your own people. What lower of an expectation could anyone have for their own people other than to allow threats of violence and violence to be perpetrated? Because if you allow a threat to go on, a threat is a prelude to something else. You can't say it's okay to threaten, but not to be violent. Come on, people. Are you serious? Escalation. None of it is acceptable. But then again, people have their own standards when it comes to deciding what they're going to accept. None of it is acceptable. It's a situation in our community that's been allowed to fester for many years. And we're up here wondering what happened. Why don't people respect us? People, we know the adage, respect starts where? It starts in the home. Now, this is a situation, a conversation that occurs at the individual level, at the family level, and at the community level. By no means is this a collective application. You determine how you're going to be treated. And if you think it's okay for people to sit around and consider it acceptable for threats to be wielded and absolutely nothing will be done, okay, that's what somebody's going to decide. You make your decision. But if you adopt that, disposition you cannot complain if other people do not respect you in plain simple terms i'm going to make this very clear you're known for this disposition and then you get in a situation where someone is threatening your family or god forbid one of your relatives is injured or killed 
how anxious are people going to be to help you out? Guaranteed, you're going to expect it, right? Are you going to be happy if people are refusing to help or telling you you shouldn't be getting the authorities involved while at the same time, people are refusing to even help you. They're telling you, you shouldn't be calling for any help. And what are you going to do? It is an absolutely ridiculous position to assume because no one can take on the world. I don't care how big and bad, how much talking people do. A single person cannot take on the world. It is ridiculous to sit around and listen to people. If somebody wants to take on and believe that mess, they can. You see the difference when a situation visits upon those who insist on assuming this disposition. They get very angry when no one wants to come to their defense. We have seen this before, people. Everyone in our communities has experienced this. People make their choices. People are free to associate and decide what they're going to do. I am just making it very clear. This is a position that doesn't help anyone. And it's never a position I would ever even consider assuming. But the bottom line is, I avoid these type of entanglements. And when something like this occurs, I will never hesitate to notify the authorities if and when there is ever a threat of violence towards me, a relative, anyone I know, love, or care about. And before I go, I wanted to make sure you were aware of how to contact your victim witness assistance program. You can locate these services through either your city attorney's office, the local county district attorney's office, or you can call your state's victim witness office. As always, you know there is much more to come. Meanwhile, you know the drill. Fire, be where.